So uh, if we look back at the at this last year, what would you say um, was the thing that surprised you the most uh, uh, over the last uh, over the last year? I think there are two things that come to mind. One is, and, I, and I'm embarrassed to say I was I was surprised by it because I I should have had a better understanding of this. I guess uh -huh. one is the what we learned about higher education and what that institution uh, across the country and across I think Western countries generally what it's been turning out and the the kind of thinking in the humanities that many of the protesters demonstrated and, and again there's there's lots of questions about who was pushing these protests but but there was real support for what they were doing and i'm i'm speaking here for people who are just jumping in the encampments we saw at elite universities across the country and the messages that they, the people there were pushing the flags they were flying and i would remind people that it was not only the hamas flags there was also hezbollah flags which is important to recognize now now that israel's you know, more concerted effort. It's against going them. on today, right? I mean, it's going on right now as we speak at, at mm -hmm. major American universities. They, they, they're using this day to, to continue their protests. Yeah. So that's just at a, high, at a headline level. I'm sure we could dig into it. At a headline level, that's one of the things that I was taken aback by, I guess, is maybe more accurate. And then it, it all sort of clicked into place once you start reflecting on what are they saying? What What is the frame that they're using? And, and there's more to say about that. You know, we can come back to it. But the other one that I am not really surprised, but it it it's maybe I'll just say it's it's there's a level of evasion, and I mean that in the distinctive Ayn Rand sense of not wanting to face the facts and refusing to face facts and making up stories to deceive oneself about what's actually happening in this conflict. And I. You know, I, I, when I wrote the book, What Justice Demands, I spent a long time reading into this field, long before I started the book. I was reading about it for a long time. I think the first time I got really interested in this, we were working together on something in the year 2000, in a, yeah. sort of the Israel's rise and so on. Got really interested in that. And all the way through that period, I realized there's just a lot of dishonesty going on in how people understand the conflict, what is going on on each side. But if ever there was a moment of clarity about what's going on here. You have a day a year ago, exactly, where one side in this conflict showed who they actually are, which is barbarians, enemies of civilization, slaughterers, murderers, rapists, executioners. And the other side showed what it was. It was, it was being victimized despite being more powerful, despite being free. And that should be a a bright line for people, but it is not. And that's to me, one of the, the saddest things in this last year, that moral clarity that should be, I think a lot of people woke up and thought, yeah, I don't think I can be part of what this whole pro-Palestinian situation can be about. If this is what the vanguard of the Palestinians is about. And there, there have been people who walked away from it, but the tying this to the first point, there are people who are attracted by this in a perverse way. And that's, that's, that's sort of the, the overall uh, recognition that I would bring forward, which is, and, and it's something I'm really interested in explaining to people, how is it that having seen what Hamas did on October 7th, there are people who are now taking the time out of their lives and, in, and going to protests and camping and, and all, all the disruption that we've seen across the country, closing down bridges, closing down roads, going on the, all they they want to be they want to see Israel fall, and that is what's driving them. And to me, that you have to be evading so much to see that as a as a goal, and to tell mm -hmm. yourselves fantasies in thinking about who's in the right and who's in the wrong. And and that's that's really the the biggest part of this. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think both boys. I mean, in a sense that. I, I was surprised and not surprised by the demonstrations. Uh, uh, all the all the reasoning, all the philosophy behind it was not surprising. The, the, all the uh, you know ph philosophy that has gone into the way these kids have been taught and what they've been taught and the, the altruism driving all of it deep down, the irrationality, and yet the sheer nihilism of it, the sheer hatred of everything good in this world that this really symbolizes 
that shocked me and still shocks me. I mean, I mean, still, I'm still furious today when, I, sure. you know, when I, I looked earlier and saw the, 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 the raising the Palestinian flag in Chicago right now. And I think right in front of one big building, a huge Palestinian flag in the midst of Chicago. And you're right, the evasion that is required in order to go, just go, yeah, okay. I mean, and then the second part of it is what you mentioned, I think is true, the, the evasion. There it's broader, right? So it's not just these kids. There I find it with all these middle of the road commentators, even some pro-Israel commentators, but who want who want Israel to be restrained, who don't want, don't, don't exaggerate, don't go too far. And, and in in some senses, they're worse because they're they're not nihilists. They don't want to just see the world burn. They've actually taken the time to present themselves pro-Israeli. And then to have this compromising, mealy-mouthed, clear evasion, it, yeah, I, I, that that is, again, I understand it. I know what's happening. It's not surprising. It's still shocking, and it shocks me every time I see it.